Hello all, welcome to this channel CFD Baba. Here we simulate CFD cases using ANSYS Workbench Fluent. Today we will simulate heat transfer and fluid flow through single pipe heat exchanger. We will create the geometry inside design modeler. I will show you the steps to create the geometry, mesh it and solve it by the method of conjugate heat transfer. Conjugate heat transfer means that we account for conduction as well as convection heat transfer phenomenon. In CFD, we have three basic steps, pre-processing, solving and post-processing. In the workbench fluent, Geometry and Mesh tab are for pre-processing. Setup and Solution are the solving tools and the Results tab is the post-processing tool. Let's start by right-clicking on Geometry and create new Design Modeler Geometry. We want the flow of our fluid in the positive X direction. Hence, I will create a plane on YZ plane. Next, I will create a sketch. Click on Sketching. Click on Circle and create a circle of 1 meter. To specify the dimensions, click on Dimensions and click on the circle to give the dimensions. Give the dimension as 1 meter. Click on Fit View button. Next, we have to extrude this geometry. To extrude the geometry, click on Modeling. Click on Extrude button. Select the sketch. Click on Apply. We need to extrude the geometry up to 4 meters. Enter 4 meters. Click on Generate. The sketch has not been selected. Right click on extrude, click on edit selections, click on sketch, click on apply, click on generate. Now you can see that the circle has been extruded into a pipe. Next, we will create inlets and outlet for our pipe. To create the inlet pipe, we need a plane in offset to ZX plane. Click on ZX Plane, click on New Plane button. We need to create a plane in the upward as well as downward direction. Let's create the upward plane first. I want to offset the plane in positive Y direction. So in Transform, we will select Offset Global Y. I will select the value of offset as 0.8 meters. Click on generate. You can see that the new plane has been created. Now we need to create a sketch on this plane. Click on sketching. You can click on the y-axis to get a view from the top. Select the circle and generate a circle sketch. We need to give dimensions to this circle. Give dimension as 0.3 meters. Next, we need to specify how far is this circle from our axis. Click on General. Select the axis and select the center of the circle. Give the dimension as 0.5 meters. Click on Modeling. Now we need to extrude our sketch so that it meets the cylinder. Select the sketch. Click on Extrude button. Select the sketch again. Click on Apply. The sketch has been selected. Now we need to extrude the sketch up to the cylinder. I will use the direction as reversed and extend type as to next. Click on generate. 
This will extrude the pipe up to our cylinder. Now we need to create another pipe that is the outlet. To create the outlet, I need to create a new plane below our cylinder. Again, I will select the ZX plane. Click on New Plane. I need the plane to be offset in the negative Y direction. So in Transform, I will select Offset About Global Y. Enter the value as minus 0 0.8. Click on Generate. You can see that the new plane has been generated. Select the plane and click on Sketching. Click on negative Y axis to get a bottom view. Click on circle and create a circle. Give the dimension of circle as 0.3. Now we need to specify the distance of the circle from the axis. Select a general, select the axis and select the midpoint of the circle. Give the value as 3.5. Click on Generate. Go inside Modeling. And now we need to extrude the new sketch. Click on Extrude. Select the new sketch. Click on Apply. Now we need to extrude the sketch up to the cylinder. In the Extend type, I will select to Next. Click on Generate. You can see that we have formed a new solid body which will act as the shell of our heat exchanger. Now we need to create the tube inside this heat exchanger. We will create a single tube. To create the tube, select the YZ plane. We need to create a new plane offset in the negative x direction click on new plane button the base plane has been selected as yz plane i need to transform in the negative x direction i will select offset global x the value of offset is minus 0.5 meters click on generate you can see that the new plane has been created. Select the plane 6 that is the new plane and click on sketching. Select the circle and draw a circle from the midpoint. Give dimensions to the circle. The diameter of the circle is 0 0.3. Click on generate. Go inside modeling. Now we need to extrude this sketch so that we will get the tube of our shell and tube heat exchanger. Click on Extrude button. Select the sketch. Click on Apply. We need to extrude the sketch up to 5 meters. Click on Generate. Before clicking on Generate, make sure that you have used the operation as add frozen. Add frozen ensures that a new fluid domain is formed and the new geometry does not get merged with the old geometry. Click on generate. This will create a new solid that will act as tube of our heat exchanger. These are only the fluid volumes of heat exchanger. But for conjugate heat transfer, we also need the solid domains. We need to create the walls of the shell and the tube. To create the walls, first I will hide the tube. Press on hide body. Select the solid that is the shell and we will use the command thin slash surface. This will help us to create the walls of the shell. In the selection type, we will use faces to keep. 
In the geometry, we need to select the faces. To select the faces, first we need to cut our geometry. Click on Y-axis. Select the section plane tool. Cut the section plane of geometry. Now, we need to specify which faces to keep. We will select the faces that we need. Select the faces on the outside of shell except the inlet and outlet face. Click on apply. Click on generate. This will create a wall for our heat exchanger with the thickness of 0.05 meters. Now we need to fill this shell so that we can get our fluid domain inside the shell. To fill this geometry, go in tools and click on fill option. Now we need to fill by cavity. You need to select all the faces that are going to get wet due to the fluid. These are all the wetted faces. Click on apply. Click on generate. This will create a new solid which is the fluid domain inside our shell wall. So this is the shell wall. This is the tube and this is the shell fluid domain. You can see the shell fluid domain separately and you can see the shell wall separately. Now we need to create wall for our tube. So hide all other bodies, select the tube and use the same operation that is thin slash surface. We will use the faces to remove. Select the inlet and outlet face to remove. Click on apply. Click on generate. These will remove the faces and we will get the solid pipe. But now we do not have the fluid domain inside pipe. Hence, while using the thin operation, select the preserved bodies as yes. Again, click on generate. This will give us the wall of the pipe as well as the inside of the pipe. But now we need to do boolean operation so that we get the fluid domain just inside the pipe. Select the pipe, click on create, click on boolean. Select the subtract boolean operation. Select the pipe, click on apply. That will be the target body. Target body is the body from which we want to delete our object. In the tool body, select the pipe wall. Click on apply. Select yes for preserve tool bodies. Click on generate. This will give us the wall of the tube as well as the fluid domain inside the tube. Switch off the section plane. Now you can see that we have total four solids. The first one is the wall of the shell. The second is the fluid domain inside tube. The third is the fluid domain inside the shell and fourth is the wall of the tube. Let's name these geometries. First one is the shell wall. Second shall be renamed as tube domain. Third shall be renamed as shell domain and fourth shall be renamed as tube wall. Now we have all the geometry required to simulate, but the geometry is merged with each other. You can see that there is no cavity inside the shell for the 
tube to pass through it. Hence, we need to do a final Boolean operation. Click on Create. Click on Boolean. Use the Subtract Boolean operation. For the target bodies, we will select the shell domain and the shell wall. Click on Apply. For the tool bodies, we will select the tube wall and the tube domain. Click on Apply. Click on Generate. This will give us the cavity through which our tube shall pass in the shell of this heat exchanger. But as you can see, ANSYS has deleted our tube. Hence, while doing the Boolean operation, make sure that you select Yes for Preserve Tool Bodies. Click on Generate. Now you can see that we have all our four bodies and they are separate from each other. Now we need to specify the solid and the fluid domains. The tube wall will be solid. The shell wall will be solid. The tube domain will be fluid. And the shell domain will also be fluid. Make sure that you have assigned the fluid properties accordingly. Now we need to select all the geometry parts and right click and form a new part. This will ensure that we get a conformal mesh while doing the meshing operation in ANSYS Fluid. For conjugate heat transfer, we need conformal mesh between the solid and the fluid domains. So this is how you can create a simple geometry of single pipe shell and tube heat exchanger inside ANSYS Workbench Design Modeler. In the next video, we will see how to mesh and solve this geometry using ANSYS Fluent for analysis of heat transfer and fluid flow through shell and tube heat exchanger.